So when installing Grass TMOS uh, 110 soft close hinges, uh, the first thing you need to do is decide how far from the top and the bottom you would like your hinges. Um, on this particular door, um, I only need two hinges because it's not very heavy weight. Um, but for your door, you may need three or four hinges, depending on the weight. There's plenty of uh, guides online which show you how many hinges per door. Um, for this for this door, I'm going to choose to go 12 centimetres from the bottom and 12 centimetres from the top. So this first measurement, I've got my set square set to uh, 12 centimetres. I'm just going to make a little mark here. It's a mark where the 12 centimetres in. I'm going to use my set square there to just run a line so I know exactly where the... 12 centimetre mark is from there. So the next measurement what we need to work on is how far from the edge of the door the hinge should be placed. We can look at this guide here uh, to work that out. So it depends on how, this is for an overlay application. Um, so if we look down here, this guide can be found on online uh, quite easily. Um, so for our particular circumstance, uh, we have an overlay of 16mm. Uh, overlay is the amount of uh, the amount of the door that goes over the edge of the unit or the cabinet. So it's it's uh, that measurement there. Um, now ours needs to go over by 16mm. So we know that distance to cuppy needs to be 4 mil. And if you see here, um, E there, we've got distance to cuppy, and that is the distance from the edge of the door into cuppy. So the way that you can work that out is um, hinges always use a 35 mil diameter hole. Um, this seems to be standard across different brands. It always seems to be 35 uh, for most applications. Um, so what you need to do is half that number, which is 17.5. That will give you the center. And then you need to add on the distance to the edge, which you, we just worked out before. So for us, um, we want an overlay of, excuse me. Uh, for us, we want an overlay of 16. So it's four mil from the edge. So it's four plus 17.5. Is 21.5 so the center of our hole needs to go 21.5 mil from the edge of the door that's where we need to start the hole for the hinge one important thing to note here is uh, when you know your door thickness you know your distance to cuppy and um, you can then work out from this table how far the minimum gap should be on the other side of the door I will show you that in a second and um, so our door is it's, it's, uh, it's actually a 12 mil thickness, but we're having a shaker style, so it's gonna be 24 mil where the hinges go. Um, so, and we're having a four mil distance could be. So our minimum gap is 2.1 mil. This is to stop it catching on the other side of the door. I'll just show you what I mean here. So when I say about the gap from the other side of the door, I actually mean the same side. So this gap here, um, if you have it too small, it will catch on that edge there. Um, however, if you go by the minimum that was said, then that should be 2.1 in our circumstance. Um, the way that you work that out is, if you know how the length that this comes out, then you can work out, okay, the door is overlaying, this is for us, 16 millimeters, so I then need plus 2.1, so I need 18.1 mil at least sticking out. I know I've got over that, I think I've got 19 mil sticking out here. Um, so that's just something to keep bear in mind when you're putting uh, these sort of edges on, to bear in mind that you're adding up the gap plus the overlay and make sure you have enough of a, a stick out to do that. If you don't, you can buy different base plates which hold it away from the door further. Ours are a normal base plate, uh, but you can buy different base plates which hold uh, the whole hinge away from this edge further. So I'm now going to measure 21.5 mil 
from the edge of the door to find the centre of our hinge hole. I'll then just use a set square again to draw a longer line so we have some uh, we have somewhere for the reference for the screw holes. The next measurement that we need to do is um, to work out where these screw holes go. Um, so we know they're 9.5 mil back from the center of the drill hole and they're 45 mil apart. Um, so I'll show you how I work that out. Now this is specifically for a drilling pattern for screw fixing. You might have a dowel or impresso fixing and they're all, all here, all the different ones. We're going with this application and I'll show you how I do that. So on your square, set square, you need to line this up. So you've got 9.5 mil back. Make a mark here. And we'll just make another one just to be safe. So we ensure I'm getting a straight line. One important thing to note when doing this is that I really recommend that you have a set square, something that has a right angle on it. Um, if you don't have something like this, um, you are going to have to put more marks to make sure the lines uh, are level. Um, so for example, where we just put those dots, we can use the set square and we can ensure that the line is nice and straight. The next measurement we need to look at is how far these screw holes are away from each other. As you can see, 45 mil. Um, the way that I work that out is to put um, the middle, obviously half of 45 is 22.5. So I'll find 22.5 in the center here. That's 22.5 and then I know that one hole is going here at the top and one hole is going here on 45. And that's my two screw holes uh, for the connections. So your pilot holes need to be here, here, and here. I use a really thin, small drill bit that helps it with you when you do your 35 mil hinge cutter to get it right in the middle. Um, and let's do those pilot holes now. The documents tell you that you need to be a minimum of 12.6 mil of depth. Um, my hinge cutter is 15 mil in depth from the from the point to there. So I know that um, all the time it's gonna be deep enough. Um, my doors are actually only 12 mil, so I'm gonna go all the way through. There's gonna be a shaker style bit that's gonna cover the, the shown bit. So what you do then is you put your hinge cutter right in your pilot hole. Once you've done that, just take it slow. If you remember back a while back, it said the distance from the edge should be four mil. And if you've sort of measured this out correctly, you can recheck that the distance from the edge is four mil or whatever your distance should have been um, to check that you've got it right there. So the next thing you do is place your hinge in the slot. Um, as you can see, I screwed up here, I had to remeasure. Um, so we all do it. And um, the way you can ensure it's straight is by one, ensuring the pilot holes line up, and then two, ensuring that the edge of the hinge lines up with this line here. Um, so once you've got that about right, you can go in with your screws. Um, these ones are pan head, uh, I think four by 16 mil. And these seem to suit this application quite well. I'd recommend not tightening it full way just to make sure you get it straight. And then go the full way when you know, when you know you've got it straight there. And that hinges in. So the next job is deciding where your mounting plate fits on the cabinet or the unit. Um, it, the holes have to go 37 mil from the edge of the unit and 32 mil apart. Um, it says you should use 3.5 by 15 screws um, and X is the height 
of the mount, mounting plate. This is a normal mounting plate, so it sits as close to the uh, unit as possible. You can get 2mm and extended ones that sit further away if you want your door to not catch on the edge. Um, so that's why X is not a set amount because it can be varied. I'll just show you that on the unit. So on the unit here, you need to be 37 in from that edge and then the holes, so 37 at a straight line, the holes need to be 32 apart from the central point. So to work out where your hinges will actually go on the edge of the unit, you need to remember what you measured down on the door and up from the bottom to the hinge. So we measured 12 mil, but never forgetting we have to add a gap. You can't have a zero mil gap because it'll always just catch. So from, from this door above to the next door, I recommend the two mil gap, which kind of looks like that. Um, you obviously can change it for your application. So the way I would work this out is have 12 centimeters or 120 mil plus two, two mil. So my base plate would have to be 122 down uh, from that door there. And we'll do the same at the bottom and ensure it's in the middle. I may have to adjust those figures depending on where it sits at the bottom and stuff. But I'll show you when I've got it measured. So this is how I measure, I just get a straight ruler. I try and line it up with any straight part in the thing. I need to measure down 120 centimeters plus two mil for the gap. And I make a mark there. I then use my set square to draw a line across at that mark to ensure that I've got it all the way down. To find where the screw holes go, as before, we measure 37 mil from the edge. So set your set square or measure to 37 mil. You make a mark there. It's also worth making a mark further up and further down because you won't be able to use a set square to get this straight. And then you just need a ruler and your holes are 32 mil apart based on the middle line. So if you find um, 16 mil, which is half of 32, in the middle. Okay, I've actually got. Let me join this line up first. So if you find 60 mil on that line, and you put the first mark at the top, and you put the second mark at 32 mil. Those two are your drill holes. Your the way you work out where the lower hinge goes, or this is the way I do it, you need to know the measurement of your full door. Um, you take off the cent to the center point of the hinge, you take off that, which we know is 120 mil, um, and then you add the two mil gap. I'll just show you on here. Yeah. So my door is 1312, minus off 120 is 1192, and then plus two mil from the gap. The reason I do it this way and not minus off 240, which would be the obvious thing to, to get the actual gap, is so that I can measure easily from this door. So I'm measuring from the same spot from the door. So my measurement was 1312, because uh, that's the full length of the door, minus 120, which is the central point of the hinge, plus, uh, sorry, which is uh, 1192. And then I need to plus two for the gap, as in I need to move the door down by two mil for that gap up here. So now that I've got my mark for the measure, I can put my set square across and measure across and get the holes in the right place the same way that I did before. So to place your base plate, um, what I do is line up my pilot holes here through the holes, just stick a couple of screws in quickly. Uh, go in slowly with this, make sure it's all lined up because this is where you have trouble if uh, when you're putting your door on. Uh, just make sure it's nice and neat there and straight before you go in with the second one. 
and you've always got to make sure that this hook system is at the back so the long edge goes to the back there. So to get your doors on um, I'd recommend pushing your hinges out like this. I get the top one first, this can always be a bit fiddly. Um, get the top one first here. I'll show you on the bottom one properly. So make sure that your door is not touching otherwise it won't connect. If your door is a bit further away that's when it's going to snap in, you just push it back it snaps in. So at this point you can see if your door kind of closes nicely, if it fits well. Um, now I can see straight away that okay the gap is good but this door is sticking out further than this one. So when we're coming to adjust it um, these, this screw pushes the door in and out, so to fix that problem, we would need to um, turn the screw. You may not be able to see this. But that is moving the door slightly in. They are very micro adjustments. This screw here moves the door forward and back, so away from this, uh, away from the edge here. If you were sort of catching on this edge, you could move it further away or closer to if you needed it to be closer to um, that edge. The base plates also do have adjustment. Um, so this screw here moves the base plate up or down, which in turn moves the door up or down. Once you have this set in the right location, um, you can actually put two additional screws in here and here. Um, they should not be pan head though, they could, should be set countersunk so that they go into the thing and they don't stick out like these ones do. Um, now you don't have to do that. I see people not doing that or sometimes doing it. I, I'm going to do it here because these doors, although there's only other quite lights, there's still only two hinges on it. So I'm going to put all the strength in there that I can once I've got this set right. So if you need to get these doors off quickly, you've got this little lever here. If you pull that, the hinge will actually come off in place. Uh, it's like a little catch. And when you're pushing it in, it will click back in. Um, these, not all door hinges have this, but these grass TMOS ones have this little lever here. Um, which has a plus or minus on and excuse me it has a plus or minus on and it controls how soft or how hard the door closes so these are soft close hinges and um, you can set it so it, it's super soft close or like a little bit soft close or not very much soft close at all obviously that depends on your door weight and all other factors and um, they come as in the middle of standard i think um yeah it's just a another point of adjustment so that's it for fitting the Grass TMOS uh, 110 soft closed doors. Um, obviously this is not finished at the minute, we're going to have some uh, MDF around to make a shaker style door and they're going to be painted. Um, but hopefully this gives you a good insight. I really struggled to find a helpful video on this. Um, there are some out there but that they go more into the detail of actually attaching it rather than where to specifically put the hinges how far to have the overlay, stuff like that. Um, you do need to get your head around the mass. Two things that will greatly help you with this is a set square that has a measure on um, or an adjustable set square and another person to hold stuff, uh, make it easier, hold the tape measure. Um, keep going with it, you'll get there. This is my first time doing it um, and I feel like I've finally got my head around it. Thanks.